Hey y'all and welcome back to Cajun Country Living. I know we told y'all in the last video that it was gonna be sooner than later that we were gonna have the opportunity to put these containers up on top of the other two containers, but that time has actually come a lot quicker than we actually anticipated. Yes, it is officially crunch time. We have less than five days to get everything that we need to get completely done before we can set these other two containers up there because there is no room for error. It has to be 100% finished, bulletproof. Woo! Got a lot to do. It's hot, but we're gonna get it. Now, the other day we got back out here for a few hours and finished moving this container after we ate those fantastic Cajun stuffed drumsticks that a lot of y'all asked the recipe for. So I'm gonna work on getting that for y'all and seeing if Jim's gonna be willing to make some of those with me. And maybe we can make y'all a little cooking video. It's been a few years since we did that for y'all. So just like we talked about in the last video, we got it from feet, we got it to inches, we got it set on the pads, and then we had to do that little bit of fine tuning. And we got that done, but let me tell you, you talk about pulling your hair out, like with that big equipment trying to just inch it over, then it wants to stick and jump and move, and, but we got it. We were successful. Plus we got it taken down off of those blocks and that was really, really a big step to get done. So we have so much stuff from welding it down, to putting up the I-beam, to putting some pipe in place, to double and triple checking the size. Just, y'all, there's so many things. Even Jim last night was outside, I don't even know till when, working on fixing the ultimate Hootis up, making sure that it was reinforced because we actually have to get these other two containers moved over in this area as well before we're able to get it done, so. I was repairing cracks in Lydia's wells on the ultimate Hootis, FYI. It. Prove it. Prove it. Da, 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 da. Prove it. Today's video is sponsored by Tacovas. Let me tell you why I always choose Tacovas. From the moment you pull them on, there's an instant feeling that you're ready to take on the world. It's that blend of comfort and confidence that only comes with something crafted with true passion. These boots are made by hand, step by step, over 200 individual steps, in fact. And with premium leathers, both bovine and exotic, you're looking at boots that don't just look good, they will last for generations. What I love most is they're comfortable from day one. No breaking in, no sore feet, just pure broken in comfort right out of the box. If y'all get a chance, swim by one of their stores, they've got it all. Complimentary drinks, free boot shines, and the kind of expert staff that will make sure that you leave with the perfect fit. Plus, you can add your own touch with their free branding and leather stamping. Western boots are more than just footwear. They're a piece of our heritage and our story. And with Tacovas, you're not just buying boots, you're buying into a legacy. Click the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen to grab your new favorite pair today. Tacovas, where comfort meets true grit. Well, Kept the goats in for a while. Apparently that pen won't hold water. <laughs> and Jet's the only one that's figured out how to get out so far. Last time that we put this I-beam up, we actually ended up using both tractors. But since then we have sold the blue tractor. So uh, I'm kind of a little bit nervous to put this I-beam up. You don't look very nervous. Hey, if you're scared, get a dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just gotta do it. Again. Wait, a what? Huh? A what? I said, if you're scared, get a dog. A dog? Yeah. Dog? A dog? Well, I guess it depends on what part of the country you're from or what country you're from. I don't know. It's wait, a, wait, wait. It's a dog to me. Wait, wait, wait. Now, there are some words, y'all, that truly Jim says, and I have to have him spell to me. And there is still somehow, being from Illinois, and being from Louisiana, there truly is like a <laughs> language barrier. Language barrier. <laughs> I'm dead serious. A little list of really funny things that they would always get me to say whenever I first moved down here was donkey. It's a donkey. Okay. Not a don key. Phone. Hey, that's better. You should say phone. A phone. Like ET. Phone. Phone. Okay, wait, wait. How do you say? How do you say? Say how do you say Eskimo? <laughs> <laughs> now you got me on that one. 
It's Eskimo. It is Eskimo all the way. All right, this is the last one. This one's for Teddy. Five bowls of boiling oil. Five bowls of boiling oil. <laughs> so simple. There you have it, Ted. That's right. Barbecue. But in the meantime, let this soak in. It's dog. It's frog. It's hog. It's log. So forth, so on. So if you all have any other words that you want to hear Jim pronounce, please drop them in the comments below, and we will start adding this segment into our videos of how do Southerners say certain words. Whenever we put the beam on the first container, it actually worked out perfect to where we could just cut the beam in half, and we could take the second section and put it on the second container, which is exactly what we're going to do. Lydia's going to get the tractor. We're going to get the weld machine put in place. We're going to roll this over onto the forks of the tractor, and we're going to hope that we can get it up leveled enough to get it tacked. No, we're not going to hope. We're just going to do it. <laughs> I'm telling you, Nike should really endorse me. I just do everything. I just do it. it. I would love that. <laughs> yeah, that makes me even more nervous, the fact that I'm going to have to run the tractor on this by myself. And Honestly, it doesn't really make me nervous for the fact of running the tractor. It's the fact that I'm going to be holding this probably two-ton piece of... Ah, that's a little dramatic. But... Anyway, you get the gist of it. This extremely heavy piece of pop that can knock you unconscious over your head while you're rolling. If it's a two by four or if it's a five story building, if you're holding it, it's the same thing. It's the same concept. I'll try to keep that in mind. But if I hit you over the head with a two by four, that wouldn't be as bad, right? <laughs> yeah, I'd probably live through that one. I don't know if y'all follow us or not on Instagram, but I shared it with our people who follow us on Instagram. But the other day, we needed to move just a little bit more of the hay so it could be picked up. And anyway, me and Ladley came out here. I got in the tractor. I went to start up the tractor, y'all. And there was a banana spider, which is approximately this big, compared to my face, inside of the cab of the tractor. I, anyway, anyway, long story short, the banana spider is not with us anymore because they do bite and they will cause problems. Oh, I have Jim's mic right here. Oh. But <laughs> ignore that. But uh, anyway, Ladley was a big help, and she actually fell asleep within the first, like, five minutes, I think. So I had to pick up those bales one-handed, which definitely was, let's just say, a uh, challenging experience, but we did get it done. Hey, y'all like that custom handle, huh? That is a jack handle that can double as a screwdriver, which can double as, yeah, I'm not, I have nothing for this in. Some would say that that's a screwdriver doubling as a jack handle. <laughs> Maybe so. I don't know. I don't have much patience for jacks anyway. If I can pick it up and put it on the ball, that's what I usually do because that sitting there turning thing, I don't know. I don't, ain't nobody got time for that.
we're on kind of like a time crunch right now. So what would take me approximately 15 minutes to do would take Jim about three minutes to do. So I'm gonna let him get this eye beam up there pretty close to where it needs to be. And that way I can just do a little bit of tweaking rather than trying to get it set up there and do everything. So best use of our time. I kind of feel bad just sitting in here and the air conditioning. Jim's out there in that hot sun having to melt. Poor baby. I guess that's what being the better weather out of the two of us gets you. I'll take second place any day. So kind of the game plan is to get this tacked up there. Obviously in more than just two places, but getting it tacked up there where it's in a good place to sit for a little while. Then we can go ahead and get the three posts. So we need to get those put in place as well. But we can come back out here and finish up all this welding. Yes, it does need to be finished up before we get those other two containers put on, but there's gonna be a lot of time between now and then that we'll have small opportunities to come out here and do this. But getting the bulk of it even just put in place is really what needs to happen. That's pretty close. Last time that we measured these, each pipe was a little bit different. So we're gonna go through and measure them again, each one, not just going off of one set size. Cause you never know if this concrete has a little high spot in it, if the I-beam has a little dip in it. We just don't know. And it'll be easier to just cut them all to the exact same size. This was another thing that Jim went ahead and got set up yesterday. He got the pipe pulled out here. He got the saw to cut the pipe. That way today we can just zoom through here and I think the only thing that we're going to need is an extension cord, huh? Let me pull it over for you. Yeah, I think an extension cord and maybe a couple of two by fours or something to hold this end up. Got it. You know what? I think I got a scrap piece of pipe. That'd be nice. It'll just roll on that pipe. I'll grab that real quick. <laughs> 